just one ember can burn down everything. Because, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for a fight? Yeah. Monkey Man was written and directed and stars and likely had the catering done by Deb Patel. I'm joking about that last part, but this man wore many hats, broke a lot of bones, busted his body up to bring this revenge story to life. And thanks to Jordan Peele and Monkey Paw Productions, no really, that's what Jordan Peele's production company is named. And if you don't get it, then honestly, you don't get horror. Yeah, it's stupid, man. I've walked out. He's got a board with a nail in it. Ah, the Simpsons. Everything goes back to the goddamn Simpsons. But anyway, the Simpsons aren't involved in this. Even though one of the guys is a little bit goofy, it's like, I call her Nikki. Minaj. Big bumper. Nice headlights. Let's boogie. Boy, that guy was really goddamn comedic, wasn't he? But Deb Patel was not the only man <clears throat> that had something to do with writing this. But in case the name Dave Patel... Rings a bell, but you can't quite place it. Well, he was in the M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong disaster of The Last Airbender, but that wasn't his fault. It really wasn't, because nobody could have saved that. M. Night should have been run off the goddamn planet for what he did there. But Chappie, Hotel Mumbai, The Green Knight, Dev is a really, really talented guy. And he was able to helm this <clears throat> and act in it and... Read up on the shit that he went through to get, you know, to get this production going. The fact that he busted his hand on the first day and he kept going. He was in incredible shape here, too. Anyway, it was also written by a couple other people. One was John Colley, Colley, Border Colley. Oh, I imagine, please. He did Master and Commander. Happy Feet and Hotel Mumbai. Yeah, Happy Feet and Master and Commander, that's pretty much on opposite sides of the spectrum, even though, you know, they both involve water, technically, kind of. <clears throat> and another guy who is Paul A. I'm just going to say that because I'm probably going to butcher his last name. Keith Lemon, the film. I don't know what the fuck that is. But yes, Deb Patel plays. He goes by Bobby during this and is revenge-filled because he suffered some loss when he was a child. And now he has been... Just biding his time, working odd jobs, wrestling in a ring with no goddamn canvas, just wood. <clears throat> and uh, Charlotte Copley, I keep wanting to call him Shart, because he was in a movie that was a full-on Shart, that was District 9. That's not his fault, he's actually pretty good, that movie just wasn't. He plays the ring announcer, and you know, he, he has... Bobby, who is, you know, is in a monkey mask and kind of is a jobber, shall we say, a guy that just gets beat up. And if he bleeds, all the better, he gets paid more. But then he gets more information about, you know, a syndicate that he wants to take down some really, really powerful people that don't see the poor people even as people. Not even just that they're downtrodden and that they could be useful for labor. No, they just let them sleep on the streets. They treat them like dirt. It's set in a fictional city in India. And he builds up this whole goddamn, you know, thing through uh, friendships, uh, you know, coincidences, and also a lot of training and a lot of blind luck. And also a lot of violence. This movie is pretty fucking violent when it wants to, when it wants to be. And that was its strength. Its strength lies in the action, its stunts, and some of the humor. It's a well, well, well-traveled revenge story. Now, I'm sure there are certain things that didn't click with me because I'm not really familiar with Indian culture. <clears throat> but basically, the theme of it, if you've seen a trailer, you know. There's a protector of the people, the white monkey, protecting, you know, against this demon king that brought terror and fire to the land. And I do have to say the villains are pretty good. And there's some really great cinematography and some great camera work. <clears throat> like, in the one action scene where... There's something that kind of goes a little bit tits up and Bobby has to escape and we're going down the steps and everything. And this, it sort of gave me flashbacks to John Woo's Silent Night, except Monkey Man's actually good. Is Monkey Man great? There are great parts to it. I don't know if this is necessarily the landmark slam dunk that everybody has said it is, but I don't think it is nearly as bad as any of the detractors are saying. Yes, a well-traveled revenge film sometimes can turn some people off, but I just like the fact that it bounced enough good stuff and... I gotta say, the character of Sita, uh, Subhita, however you say her last name, fuck. I mean, with all due respect, fucking hell, she is gorgeous. She's the main lead, she's the main leading lady in this. She is absolutely captivating. And Pitovash, however the hell you say that, if I got that right, um, he plays the, the comic relief Alfonso. Now, 
he doesn't get to do as much as I would have liked. I, I, they gave him some good scenes and then they kind of just forgot about it. It felt at times a little bit disjointed and that was a little bit, uh, that was a little bit disappointing, but it really did work. And it told a story about like flashbacks, you know, how his revenge came to be and the setbacks that he's gone through and the awakening that he would need to finally just rise up back on his feet and take revenge on the people that ruined his life. I do want to give a shout to the actor to play Rana. I thought he was good. <clears throat> uh, Shock T. He was the uh, gray-haired guy that was shown in it. He's pretty good as well. <clears throat> and the character of Queenie, who I'm not familiar with the actress, but I need to find out more about her because she is apparently in her early 50s, doesn't look it, and was pretty good as a, a bit of an evil bitch. And this really doesn't sugarcoat it. Like, it makes it obvious who the, char <clears throat> the evil characters are. And it makes it obvious who the good characters are. And there's really, no, there's really no discrepancy. Nothing at all. No twists, no turns. There's just full-on violence when it wants to be. I wish this had had a little bit more action. Because there, there was some setup. And then there was that really good thing you know, with the, with the scene in the bathroom. It was like Vince McMahon trying to leg tackle Harley Race in a restaurant. No, really. That actually happened in 1983 right before Starcade talked about that. In my Harley Race Dark Side of the Ring episode. Cheap plug there for those of you that are wrestling fans that are still watching this, watching this particular video. If you were watching this for the first time, thank you very much. But we had that, we had the car chase, and then basically, you know, Bobby has to fight out from this whole thing. He's listed as kid on IMDb, but Bobby comes from some, you know, little reference in the movie. And then he has to train and train and train. And there's some great cinematography here. Some really, really great cinematography. Because, hey, hey, he's the monkey man. People say he monkeys around, but he's just a man of the people trying to bring the rich all down. He's just trying to be friendly by stabbing people repeatedly and making sure that they will stop, you know, living. Because, hey, hey, he's monkey man. People say he monkeys around. I would have probably done something like that for a musical intro. But two things... I'm not very good with the musical intros, as you can tell, I can't sing at all, and it's late. It's late, and I just wanted to get into this. This is pretty fun, though. It is quite enjoyable. It is, again, maybe not the absolute best. I mean, you could argue that this is basically just in the vein of John Wick, which I still need to go back and review those at some point when I have time, har har. But Dev Patel put a lot of effort, blood, sweat, and tears, and broken bones into this, and that should be celebrated. Many more positives than negatives. I definitely have to recommend this. Watch it in the theater with the best sound for, you know, to be absorbed in those action scenes. And also, Subhita, beautiful. Anyway, three, two, one. Spoilers. No, really. Fuck. God, the actress playing seats is beautiful. So, <clears throat> basically, um, this character of uh, uh, Shakti, he led, uh, you know, he led the police, uh, Play, you know, then the police chief was played by Rana. You know, go Rana, go, go. Rana, be good. And Rana burned down the whole village. And that ended up basically causing burns on, um, you know, Bobby's hands. And that's something that plays into his whole, you know, revenge. He tries to take down Rana. And even though he has prepared, he's done some good stuff and he's worked hard. He, at one point, is taking care of a dog. The dog's fine, by the way. The dog is fine. The dog is fine, I believe. I had to get up at one point <clears throat> and use the bathroom, but I believe that was <clears throat> before the dog was even introduced. So, God, I just really hope that I didn't just zone out and the dog ended up being fine. Cute dog, though. Cute dog. Take care of pets. If they're living on the street, try to give them a good home. <clears throat> that being said, he takes on jobs. He wrestles, beats his body up. I can only imagine what the India wrestling scene is. I mean, they produced the great Kali... Boy, did they ever. <clears throat> and then, you know, he's scrubbing floors. He's preparing food. And then he meets uh, Alfonso, <clears throat> who helps him out with a whole bunch of stuff. And then various, various things happen after that particular scene <clears throat> or sequence where he tries to kill Rana. That doesn't work, even though he does beat him up. He gets, <clears throat> he ends up in a temple, basically, far off. And these people take care of him. He's training. There's this drum part where he's learning to do the uh, beatboxing. That was actually a pretty good scene as well. 
And <clears throat> meanwhile, Sita is being treated badly by Queenie. Again, I must admit, I must say that both those women very beautiful. <clears throat> Hope they're doing well. And Dev really was in incredible shape in this. He poured a lot into this. And should be commended. <clears throat> and this is something that you should absolutely watch in theaters. So I, I did like though with that scene where he's trying to kill where he's trying to kill Rana in the um in the bathroom, they're playing the song from Cable Guy. Don't you want somebody to love? It's a great soundtrack, by the way. Really, really good stuff. So he's in the temple, he's training and doing all this stuff. <clears throat> and then there's this uh there's this part where he gets back into wrestling after being all trained and stuff like that, and he's not going to be a jobber anymore. So this one kid comes in and places a whole bunch of, like, his life savings or money he stole from whatever, and I don't know, money he pulled out of his ass, and just bets it all on, you know, the monkey man. And because that, you know, he's wearing the monkey mask and all that. And then they talk about the white monkey and all that. There's this point just before he gets back into the wrestling ring where... He takes this weird toxic powder that could kill him, but otherwise, if he's the right guy, it'll open up his mind, and we get HAL 9000 graphics going on in his chest. I don't know what the hell's going on here. But then he beats up a couple guys in the ring. He hits one super kick. See, that's what happens if you hit an actual super kick. The Bucks couldn't do that, because the Bucks or the Blucks actually can't damage anybody. But he knocks out one guy, or kills him. We're not really actually sure, and... Uh, Charlto gets upset, brings in um, India's uh, answer to Andre the Giant in the sense that this guy looked like Andre the Giant after he died. He was wearing the singlet and he was given a barbed wire bat by uh, Mr. Copley for some reason, but he got his nuts smashed a lot. Not by the barbed wire bat, we're not AEW. Deep cut for wrestling fans here. Nobody has any idea what's going on if you don't watch wrestling. But <clears throat> then he is prepared and he's going to be a one-man rectum crew. I think that's how that saying goes. But the people from the temple show up in, you know, masks and, you know, just with knives and all this stuff and just ready to kill and these scimitars and these crop cutting deals and it's just all bloody ridiculous violence. How did they get there? How did they have all this stuff just sitting around? I don't fucking know. The money that the guy, that the kid won from, you know... Uh, Bobby winning, and the, by the way, the name Bobby comes from Bobby's Bleach. Uh, product, I assume, that's in India, or just was placed there for whatever reason. And that's how he got the name Bobby, or that's how he came up with the name Bobby. <clears throat> they have all this money, and then I guess they invested in costumes, or these costumes are just needing to be dusted off, just for such a revolutionary occasion. And Rana finally gets killed, there's this great scene where they're fighting, and then <clears throat> there are these wooden, um, you know, shoe things that, um, Shakti is, uh, you know, walking in, and it turns out there are these points that are actually, they are actually little stabby, stabby parts, so he <clears throat> does manage to stab Bobby, but Bobby manages to catch the other one in his hand, and then basically knocks him down, because he's an old man, <laughs> and he's begging for mercy, because the people need him, and he's just stabbing him, and he stabs him in the head, and then he seemingly dies, because it fades to black, it just fades to, or fades to white, and then fades out. So, who knows? I don't know if there was actually an end credits scene, by the way, because the lights came on, and I had the first Omen to go watch. Yes, I watched this, then the first Omen. I'll give you a hint about which one I liked more. Yeah, it was this. It was this. But check out the first Omen review to check out how I really felt about it. It has its issues. I don't know if it needed to be two hours, because there were points where everything made sense, and there were point, you know, the violence and stuff like that works. But there were also times where I was like, okay, this is a little, <clears throat> this is a little much. So it doesn't quite get an A+. Plus. It gets an A-. minus. It works <clears throat> for pure entertainment. As far as a movie itself, it probably get, it would probably get like a B had the violence and had the stunts not been so good. But it gets an A- minus for the sheer hard work that Deb put into it. So let me know your thoughts on Monkey Man in the comments. Please like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.